Well, today on Nation, we're talking about how to keep OSHA off your back, how to get past what they require, and just all around safety. We're talking with Mike Draper today, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCR Nation and windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Thanks for hanging out with us. If it's your first time here, have a look around. We have a ton of episodes to catch up on. We are well over 110 weekly episodes. It's been going on for two plus years now, so you got lots of content to catch up on. But we're a business oriented podcast. We're not going to tell you how to do something, we're just going to tell you the business side of things. So go back, look. Hopefully you like it. Uh, hopefully it's better than a cat video and hopefully you watch and binge on everything. Uh, if you're one of the elite, one of the cool kids, somebody who buys your supplies through me and watches and thumbs up and comments on every YouTube video, well, it is because of you that I get to have name brand taco seasoning. That was the last one. I love it, by the way, guys. If you ever want me to put uh, supplies in for you, the, the, the awesome thing is go ahead and put it in your cart, shop whenever, and then just be like, text me, Jersey, what's up? It's all in my cart. And the new trend is just telling me what kind of name brand things that I can buy <laughs> by putting the order in. It's absolutely awesome. But if you want me to, to be your rep, which I want to be, 862-312-2026 is my number. That's a sell. Text me, call me, whatever. A uh, couple of shout outs today. Derek Holloway, what's going on, man? Uh, Chaz Miller with the name brand Band-Aids. Uh, Mike Rayner, what's going on? Steve Donahue and Matt Cabot, what's up, man? Uh, those are some of the cool kids, if you didn't know, by the way. But today we're talking about something that is in the top three of the scariest of all of the topics. It's up there with taxes and uh, the government there, um, but it's OSHA. OSHA is a four-letter word for a reason. Like it can be very intimidating when you talk OSHA because a lot of us, we just don't have the training. We just don't know. And it scares us to dive into it. We think we're above it. We think it'll never happen to us. But OSHA compliance is huge. It's huge. It's so huge. In fact, Mike Draper, which you know and love has started something that is just based just on safety itself. What's going on, Mike? Hey, Josh, how are you? Thanks I for having am... me on today. I'm great, man. You are everywhere. Uh, if, if People know you, um, but you're everywhere. I see you at every uh, uh, event that goes on. You're doing classes all across the country. But for anybody who doesn't know you, tell us kind of a, 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 a synopsis of who you are, what you're doing, what's your history, and what you do now. Oh, yeah. So, um, well, much like my, many of your viewers and listeners and that, um, I'm, I'm a window cleaner, too. Uh, I started, you know, in the business when I was 16 years old. Um, I built my own company uh, in central Illinois here and then uh, later sold it in 2014. We did everything. We did high rise. We did storefronts, residential, um, power washing as well. Um, I worked uh, for another distributor for a while um, and, you know, got a lot of knowledge on products and, and, you know, how to sell them and how to uh, present them really to companies and, and help solve problems. And then um, of course I own the American window cleaning magazine now and have for the last three years. And, um, we're two years in, second year into uh, expert safety services, and uh, we're, we're a full service uh, safety consultant company. We deal everything from the engineered component uh, to a fall protection system all the way out to the cleaner themselves. Wow. And uh, like you said, we do a lot of classes and uh, we offer a lot of safety materials as well um, at expertsafetyservices.com. Nice. Well, something like uh, kind of what you do and what you've done, OSHA is not scary when you really know what they need what they're requesting and how to be safe and compliant with them. I mean, you've, you've kind of peeled the layers back from the, the, the sheep back from the ghost and saw who's underneath. Yeah. I mean, what we've done is we, we recognize that, uh, you know, obviously OSHA's out there and, and for you that, that don't know, I mean, they're, they are governing the employee employer relationship. So the guy that is a sole proprietor, he does get a little bit of a pass. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate thing, and a lot of bigger business guys don't want to hear that, but that's the reality of it. And so, but employee, employers, so if an employer is sending somebody out to do work, then OSHA says, look, you as an employer have a responsibility to take care of this employee so far as safety is concerned. 
Yeah. And then what, then what we've done is everybody's heard of like OSHA 10 or OSHA 30. And so what we've done with uh, our classes and kind of our curriculum is if you've ever taken one of them classes, they are 10 hours or 30 hours of a bunch of stuff. It's the whole general industry standard, right? For window cleaners. Well, most of it doesn't apply to us there. You talk about acetylene torches in that class. And, and then there is the fall protection ladders and, but it's just a bunch of stuff that most of the time it's not going to pertain to what we do. So what we've done is peeled that back. We've taken 1910, which is our governing document for window cleaners and pressure washers. And we've looked at the main components or the main subparts that deal with exactly what we do. Hmm. And then we've dove real deep into them. Nice. And so it basically, you're not, if you come to one of our classes or what we're doing, we're not going to talk about something that you don't need to know about. We're, we're diving really deep into what you do. Yeah. So you're focusing everything. So you're not spending wasted time because none of us have extra time, but you're not wasting time learning about how to weld something or, you know, how, you know, all that other stuff. So that's Correct. really very, very cool. The other thing with safety is, is that um, a lot of people who don't get, they don't test, they don't uh, take classes, they don't do that. They don't know what it is. They just have to guess. And then when compliance happens and there's issues, OSHA doesn't play around. Like OSHA, people are scared of OSHA because OSHA can put a company out of business. A smaller company with their fines can put a company out of business. It's very possible. And their job is good. As much as we uh, always kind of are scared of it, th their job is good because they're keeping people safe. And, um, you know, but there's a lot of things that are in OSHA that don't quite make sense sometimes because there's this kind of weird gray area and they have to word it something, but it's not always practical. And that's where people really get scared is because they just, they don't know kind of the specifics. And that's really what those classes kind of take care of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, and you know, this, the fines that we've seen this year into our industry, um, they're starting anywhere from four to $5,000 per line item that they cite. And so, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty serious business. And I mean, um, you know, there's a lot of misnomers out there. And of course the wonderful wisdom of Facebook and social media and everybody has their opinions, but yeah, you know, there's the wild opinion out there that OSHA doesn't matter, doesn't care unless somebody gets hurt or killed. It's not true. Um, we've got documented cases this year where OSHA has come out and done site enforcement, uh, on jobs where no one was hurt, no one was killed. And many of them, Josh, were residential, yeah. residential jobs. So that was the big thing that changed with OSHA 1910. It encompassed residential. And um, yeah, it's, um, it, it's serious. It's very yeah. serious. I, uh, I knew of a guy who was moving a lift. He was in a parking lot. It was in the back parking lot of a grocery store. And he was moving the lift. But, the, you know, boom was up a little bit so he could see. He didn't have his harness on. Didn't have a harness even not tied in, but just not on. And uh, there was a guy that worked for OSHA that was grocery shopping and came out and uh, had to have a chat with him. And I, I believe he got ticketed. The company he worked for got ticketed. So right. yeah, it's, 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 they're there, but if you know what they're looking for or how to please them, that's the key. And that's what we're talking about today. We kind of have the top five ways to kind of get that OSHA compliance, but to also keep OSHA off your back, really. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, there, there are some things that uh, employers can do to um, make sure that uh, they're at least walking down that road of compliance. And yeah, uh, yeah you, you hit it on the head. There's, there's really five areas where um, if, we can, if we can start down this path of those five, then um, I don't like to call anything bulletproof, but it's, it's at least where an employer can start to show that they're, they're doing the right thing. Yeah. So if you're listening right now, take out a pen and paper, write these down and just understand them. This is the first step before you even start taking classes. You, that's the stuff that really you're going to learn. But this is just a brief touch on it right now. But let's start off kind of with number five in one of the ways that you can keep them off your back. Yeah. So really the, the first, if you will, um, is a safety manual. And the reason a safety manual is so important is because because it really sets the culture of the company. So, you know, we always uh, talk about this when I go out and do a class and let's just say there's employees there, a company brings in employees and then they go back to their normal routine and they hire another guy two days later. Well, what happens with that guy? 
Yeah. And that's always our concern is that newbie that comes on, uh, the way OSHA looks at it, he doesn't go out and work until he's been trained on the equipment and the hazards that he's going to face. So what do we do for him? Well, a start is to have a safety manual. So ideally he comes in and somebody's going to go through that manual with him. It's like, look, this is, you know, ABC window cleaning company, and this is what we're doing. And here's the parameters that are set. Here's our fall protection program. Here's what we do on ladders. Here's what we do on this. And then the employee signs off on the certain understanding of things in that manual. Yeah. And so that there's a documentation that look, uh, he was brought in, he was exposed to safety. And then that safety culture is, is, you know, really uh, injected into him, if you will, right from day one. Yeah. So it's, it's key. And, and a lot of safety manuals are required now by companies. So if you're going out and doing work, especially for bigger jobs, construction sites, stuff like that, they want to see a copy of it. Yeah. So no longer can it be this great, big, thick, you know, thing that just sits up on a shelf. That's our <laughs> safety manual over there. Yeah. You know, um, it needs to be kind of a working document. So we really believe in uh, cutting to the chase with it. Um, when we produce them for folks, they, you know, they're, they're small, they're, they're PDFs, they're emailable. Uh, that they can go out, nice. but they're very workable and uh, able to get the employee up to speed on what's going on in the company day one. Yeah. And I would be willing to bet right now, 10% of you that are listening or watching have a safety manual. The other 90% don't even have a safety manual in your company. If you have employees, you need to have a safety manual. And I'd love to see if you're watching on YouTube, go there and comment. Tell me if you have a safety manual. We'll do these with all five of them. Start a conversation. I'd love to see kind of where everybody is at. But uh, safety manual is kind of that first paper document that shows that you actually took the time to have everybody on the same page. It's the first system, if you will, that everybody is getting trained on the same information, the same packet, so that things aren't getting lost. It's not up to employee number two to train number three. That's, you know, where a lot of people, I think, feel like they can get away with it. But, uh, but yeah, it's safety manuals are huge. But let's go to number four, kind of, and keeping them off your back. Yeah, so number four is, so we, we already established that OSHA wants to see a, a training, a documented training of some sort. So if you can get to one of the classes that are out there, wonderful, right? We're going to give you a certificate. We're going to give you a carry card, and that's going to satisfy those requirements under 19.10.30 and, and other requirements as well. But if you can't, if, and if you're an employer, again, you bring these employees on, they're transient, they go out the door. What we've done is we've looked at the, the I'm not going to say this is all the hazards because it's not, but the two major hazards that we face are uh, ladder safety and then rooftop uh, protection. So a guy gets on a roof, so that's going to encompass your fall protection areas. Um, so you can, we, we've created a couple safety videos around them. Those safety videos have tests. And then what you can do is you can bring an employee in. What you can't do is you can't send the videos home if you're going to use them, by the way. It's a little tip. If you're going to use safety videos, you can't send it home with the employee. Say, watch this tonight. You're going to work tomorrow. That yeah. won't get it. So it has to be where the employee can have a chance to interact and ask questions. But as long as they can, so if they may be in the office or whatever, you bring them in. You say, hey, here's our ladder safety video. We want you to watch it. And then we're going to have you take a brief test on that when you get done. Um, it tests their knowledge. It gives the employer the documentation that he needs that satisfies this requirement. So any safety video is great, but ladder safety and rooftop safety are really important because they're the two major things that, a, that an employee is going to face out there. And, um, but ultimately, we want to doc some way, somehow, showing a documented training program. Yeah. So the classes, videos, uh, I'm not opposed to the OSHA 10, OSHA 30 classes. Go take them. Um, they're just, they're very broad in their scope. Um, but any safety that you can get and have documented, that's great. Because what'll happen is if, if there's a citation, uh, what'll happen is there's a investigation and then it, OSHA investigates and then they come back with the thing and then you get an opportunity to mitigate that or try to reduce your fine or make your case. Yeah. And, um, so, so when you can go back to them and say, look, um, Johnny, he was through, you know, the OSHA 1910 class. He's got an OSHA 10 card. He's got an OSHA 30 card. Here's two safety videos that he watched. We issued tests on this. There's documents of all this stuff. It helps the employer build a case that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing so far as employees are concerned. Yeah. And here's a big, big rule of thumb in with OSHA. If it's not documented, 
it's not done. Yeah. All right. So we've got to be able to document things that we're doing. So the safety manual sign off and then training somehow we want some sort of documentation in their employee file that shows that they've had some training. Yeah. And that, that, like you said before, it's the relationship between the employee and the employer. That's what they're looking at. So if you say, Hey, as an employer, I can't force my employee to do anything, but I can do everything in my power to make sure that they're complying and doing how they're supposed to do and working as safe as possible. That's where all this comes into play is that it's saying, okay, look, I've had them look at videos. I've had them fill out this, you know, go over the manual. I've had them do all this stuff. I've done my due diligence. I've done everything that I can in my power to make sure that they work safely. They chose then to not work safely. And that's where, like you said, that mitigation side of it, that's how people can save themselves after it already happens is saying, hey, we've done everything that we possibly can to make sure that this doesn't happen. And, and I know that we didn't wanna, you know, you're, you're not here necessarily to, to sell classes and that kind of thing, but I wanna dive into that, just a quick side note. Tell us a little bit about your classes. Uh, you know, we know kind of that they're specific, but kind of tell us, do you travel? Do they have to come to you? You know, what's a ballpark price? What do they get with that? Like just training is huge and I'm, I'm a total fan of what you're doing. So to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we, um Cup, several different things. I mean, we, we do have our OSHA 1910 class. We go all over the country to do this. I mean, um, we've, we've tried really this year to make it uh, very important, try to educate contractors um, that, hey, th they are issuing fines. And, um, you, know, you know, at the end of the day, though, Josh, I just, I just want to say this, that it's, for me, we can talk talk about OSHA all we want to and fines and how to, how to not get fines. But the, the higher ground here is this. We, we have an obligation as employers to make sure that regardless of OSHA is out there or not, we have an obligation to make sure that the employees go home at night. Yeah. They're the ones servicing our business. They're the ones helping us, you know, meet the goals that we want to and, and go on and do the things that we want to. So we really need to ensure that, that, they go home. And honestly, in our, our industry, we've had a lot, we've had a lot of accidents, um, ladder accidents, water fed pole injuries and death from electrocution. Um, obviously the, the high rise, uh, injuries and deaths and things like that, that happen as well. And it just, it can't be overstated that, you know, our employees should be valuable. We all get on these business things. Oh, your employees are so valuable and you do this and you do that and you do that. And then safety goes right out the window. Yeah. So all that's just talk. But so what we've done is we've tried to take this to the OSHA 1910 class. It's a, a what I would call a general class. And we cover the things that a window cleaner and pressure washer is going to have to do. We have a big segment on ladder safety. Uh, we have a big segment on fall protection in there. We actually, you know, get in harnesses and show the proper fit. I'm amazed at every class, how many guys and some guys that have even been in the industry a long time, you go to put them on a harness. And everybody's struggling. They don't know how to get in one. They don't. So you can never teach it if you can't do it yourself. Yeah. And then, um, then we go into other things that you might not think about. So those are the two big ones that obviously everybody pops in their head. But um, electrical hazards, we talk about them and setting up minimum approach distances, specifically with a water-fed pole. Um, we talk about noise hazards, which affect our industry. If you're pressure washing, you're doing gutter vac sucking and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, we talk about uh, the JHA process, which I'm going to talk about in this list here. Um, we talk about some other hazards as well. There's main, five major components that we talk about and really dive deep into. And so a person leaves that class uh, pretty well equipped to go out into the deal. We do high rise classes as well. Uh, we either go out to people or sometimes they come to us. It depends on the situation, how many people. Um, and then we're, we're behind you besides just this class. We really believe in reinforcing. So you're going to see if you went to our website, um, you're going to see that we have, we've set up stuff for you. We've set up safety manuals. We can do them custom for you. We've set up a JHA app. We've set up, you know, these safety videos. Um, we've just, like I said, everything from that engineered component all the way out to the cleaner. I mean, we've, we've really taken care of. Does it cost? Sure. It costs. Um, uh, but, um, we think that we've done a pretty good job. Uh, we're fully insured. I carry a lot of money on my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, airs and emissions. And uh, so, uh, you know, we obviously think we're, we know what we're doing. And, and we know we do because we've had it challenged before. 
Uh, we've had we've seen we've had customers of ours in OSHA problems, and we've been able to help them out. So we know what we're doing is is standing. Well, wow. yeah, that's. I mean, it's also not what something costs, but it's what it's worth. And and safety in general is just worth. Uh, you know, it's immeasurable basically. But let's get back into the list here. So we're on number three. Tell us kind of the number three way that uh, we can uh, please OSHA basically. Yeah, so the first two, as we talked about, safety manual and then a documented training. Now, you can imagine if you just did those two things, you could just kind of check those two boxes and then nothing about safety ever comes up again, right? <laughs> yeah. And so what uh, the third thing is, is that we want to see an ongoing um, emphasis on safety. And this is handled through weekly safety meetings, or sometimes they're called toolbox talks. And they need not be real long. Uh, they can be five to 10 minutes. Uh, but each week, it's really good to just have a brief meeting with the staff, just pick a topic. And again, I, I'm trying not to make this a sales thing. We've taken care, we do this already for you. We get 26 weekly safety meetings. They're already done by topic. We tell you, here's what OSHA says. Here's what to talk about. Have everybody sign off on. Yeah. But um, this, and it doesn't have to be us. You can do it from whatever. You don't even have to pay anybody to do it. You could make them up yourself. But each week you want that. And then you want your employees signing off. Hey, we had this weekly toolbox meeting. Yeah. So now you can see as we're putting these pieces together, we've got the safety manual. That's the culture of our company. Number two is we have this documented training program. We're reemphasizing our training each and every week because we're talking to the guys on these weekly safety meetings and they're signing off on it. So we're really uh, putting our documentation all together that we have a safety program and it's ongoing in the company. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, 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 again, if you keep pushing this into people and your employees continue to learn, they're going to eventually retain all of it or most of it. And it's going to keep them safer. Like you said, they, these are, these are people that it's our job to keep safe. This continual education in this just helps people stay safe. And you know, it, it's again, crazy, crazy valuable, but, but we're on number two now. Uh, what's the, the, the next kind of way to uh, peas for OSHA? Yeah. So if you go on OSHA's website, you're going to see a logo there that says plan, provide, and train. And anybody that's taken my class, you've heard it a thousand times because really when, you know, we talk about systems a lot in business, right? How do I systemize my business? How do I, well, if you really think about safety in that system of those three words, it really starts to make a lot of sense. Plan, provide, and train. So this uh, number two that we have to do as employers is plan the work. And what OSHA calls that is a JHA or job hazard analysis. And what that means is that you have an, as an employer has looked at a job site, you've identified that the hazards that the employees are going to be exposed to, and you've told them or directed them how they're going to either eliminate or mitigate those hazards. Mm -hmm. And so the JHA is really cool because if you follow a JHA, it does all of it for you, the plan, provide, and train. I'll tell you how that happens. So if you go out to a job site and I, I assess, let's just take one thing on a hazard on a JHA and we say, you know what? They're going to be doing ladder work today. All right, now remember, plan, provide, train. So I've planned the work. I've told the employees that they're going to be subjected to uh, ladder hazards today. All right, provide. Well, on the JHA, if I've told them that they're going to be doing ladder work, what am I going to provide them? The ladders that they're going to need to do the work. And am I providing also something else that would help them mitigate the hazards? Maybe leg stabilizers, maybe an outrigger bar on the top, uh, maybe a clamp because I'm going to have them transfer off a ladder to another surface. So I need a, a clamp at the top. Whatever it is, I'm providing those things. So it, it identifies right off the bat, okay, I've planned the work. I'm providing the equipment. And oh, by the way, the last is training that also has to be provided. So if Johnny just started a day, I'm going to send him out to do ladder work and he doesn't know how to set a ladder with a leg leveler. Guess what? He's got to be trained on Yeah, that ladder with the leg leveler. So plan, provide, train. Can't, can't, <laughs> it's, it's simple in my mind, but that's the, that's the system of it. But a JHA uh, allows you to do all three at once and Here's the other thing is you, you had mentioned a while back that, you know, as employers, we can't always, you know, dictate and govern what the employers are doing out in the field. That's true. And it's specifically true in our industries because our industry is a mobile contractor world and it's really based on two men in a truck. 
right? We're going to put two guys in a truck. We're going to send them out to do work and then they're going to come back to us. That's, that's the model. Well, it's, it goes against a little bit what OSHA thinks would happen on a job site. OSHA would like there to be this competent person on every job site, right? So if you go to a construction site, you're going to see a guy walking around and he's going to make sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing safety wise. We don't have that in the mobile contract world. And it's probably, you know, I don't want to go on record here just saying it's, it's impossible, but I'm a realist too. It's probably not, you know, it's not the most feasible thing to think that there's going to be this, you know, guy that's going to govern safety on every job. Well, the way that we do that then as mobile service contractors is the JHA. It's what allows mothership or the office to direct the work in the field. Mm -hmm. So an employee gets this JHA, they look at it, they're like, okay, I'm going to 100 main, I've got ladder hazards, electrical hazards, this, 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 and then they follow that safety plan to a T. And when they do that, then this cohesiveness stays together. Yeah, it's almost like that person, that foreman is on the job site making sure that's happening. Now. And getting it into their hands, you know, there's a lot of times. I mean, you see it even on the forums where guys will see electrical lines and they'll post it. Hey, uh, should, I be, should I be cautious of this? Well, you should have known that was there before you even looked at the job. You know, there's a lot of hazards that kind of come into that. And a lot of people just, again, they, it's such a side note for safety until you talk to somebody who unfortunately had an incident. And, and, and accidents, we know people, you know Diego well, I know Diego, simple case. He was in a coma for weeks and weeks and weeks from falling off a ladder. I mean, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, until this all kind of comes about, people then start looking into it a little bit more. And that shouldn't be how it is. That's absolutely right. And um, yeah, there's, you know, I could go down the list. I'm not going to for privacy reasons and things like that, but I could go down the list and name besides Diego, I could name at least 15 families right now that have been affected this year by whatever, yeah. falling off a ladder, rope descent system failure, or not, you know, doing something wrong, uh, electrocution on a water fed pole, just on and on and on and on. And you know, that there's a, somebody turned me the other day, uh, the, I remember, I don't even, the sultran of safety or something like that. And, <laughs> nice, and I, man. you know, the, the reality is, is yeah, I'm passionate about it. And, you know, I'm passionate about it because I don't want to hear about one more death. I don't want to hear about one more injury. And, um, you know, that's why we're out there leading the charge. Yeah. The big thing about most of the accidents and the people who are in the accidents, know this but don't necessarily want to hear it either and it's not to discredit anything but almost all accidents can be um avoided because it's 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 human error um you know a process wasn't followed there's a lot of that that you could you can get to a, a, an industry that is as dangerous as ours and limit that down to next to no injuries if everybody just magically could do things the way they're supposed to yeah. And ultimately, and I'm not sitting here saying that, uh, hey, take my training and you'll never have an accident because I've been in shops this year where I've went in, done trainings, done full day trainings with everybody. And, uh, you know, I'm watching them, you know, on the news. And <laughs> so it's like it, it, it has to be a mindset. It's not about just the training or the safety manual or even a JHA. It has to be a mindset in your company. You have to be promoting this stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, OSHA knows, and if you look at their documents, they kind of write this way. Um, they, they know what they're trying to do is they would love to change the mindset of people going into work. You know, like you said, somebody posts something, should I be here? Well, that's already a red flag if you're asking a question, right? Yeah. Or if you have a guy that's on a ladder and you say, hey, I need somebody to base this ladder. Guess what? It's already unsafe because yeah. you wouldn't be asking somebody to base it if it wasn't a sketchy situation. Yeah. So. Um, they really want to change mindsets, but they know that's very hard to do. And so they create rules. Yeah. And so rules seem to be easier for people to look at and say, Oh, we can't do this or we can't do that. And rather than just principally our mindset should be different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get to the, the, the next one in the list of ways um, that you can kind of appease for ocean, just be safer all around. Yeah. So 
we, like I said, we've got the safety manual. We've got our documented safety training program. We've got our weekly safety meetings. We're reinforcing everything that we're doing and we're guiding and directing the work with our JHA. So OSHA understands very clearly that you could, as an employer, be doing all four of those things and just be checking boxes, right? Yep, we got this, we got this, we got this, and not really having a safe environment out there, especially in our world of mobile service contractors, right? Because again, we're sending two guys out to a job site, they're doing the work. So what, uh, what we've seen this year through some OSHA fines and this and that is that, and we've seen this now in three different states, and so we kind of think that it's going to be a, a nationwide deal, is that OSHA is wanting to see okay, Josh, you've got this wonderful safety program, and you've got this manual, and you're bringing everybody in, you're documenting the safety training, you're, you are doing these weekly safety meetings with everybody, and you also direct this work with a JHA. But Josh, if you've got this wonderful safety program, have you ever found anybody not complying? And that's really what they're looking at, is they're wanting to see some sort of enforcement of the safety program. Yeah. Now, it can be positive, or it can be negative. All right. So one negative would be to for you to go around as an owner and you would look at a job site and you would find Johnny not doing what he's supposed to doing. He's not using his fall protection kit and you would write him up. Yeah. All right. It doesn't have to be fired necessarily, but he would have a citation. You'd, you'd issue that back. That's probably not the greatest way to run your company. Right. Where everybody's in fear of the boss coming around and writing people up. Yeah. So the positive is another way. And, uh, you know, I told you off air, if you go by a factory and you see some of the, there'll be a sign on the thing that says, hey, there's 220 working days of no accidents here. That's what they're doing. They're, they've got some sort of enforcement policy that allows them to state that, right? And they're rewarding the positive. Hey, for every day we don't have a safety infraction, we get, you know, a pizza party on Friday or whatever. Yeah. But they're rewarding that positively. That's probably the better way to do it. But uh, some sort of, of, documentation that you're not just saying you're not just going through the motions checking the boxes on these other four things but that you're actually making people comply yeah and um, job site visits so you could visit a job site document that you did so what time it was put in the file so that if any time there was an infraction you could say no here's a here's a record of our job site visits where we've we've shown compliance yeah or here here is a written warning here's where we wrote Johnny up because he wasn't on the ladder correct um, and then here's our reward program for safety as well. So they want to see some reinforcement of your safety protocol. Yeah. And even, even with the positive side, there's going to be a lot more positive than negative, right? Maybe you yeah. don't catch anybody for months being, you know, not doing what they're supposed to, but the positive side of it is continually keeping it in their brains, like the weekly trainings. Keeping it in somebody's brain means that eventually it's just going to be second nature to them. You have to do something. What do they say? You know, 10,000 hours at something to be a professional. Like you have to continue to put this in people's brains so that they're automatically doing exactly what they're supposed to do and automatically being safe. And it takes a long time because all of us know that time is money and sometimes doing things the way that we shouldn't be is faster. And I know that sounds horrible, but I know that a lot of us also have been in that position. There's people who have leaned off of a ladder. There are people who have done all that stuff because they figure they can do it a lot faster than doing it the proper way. But if you get it into somebody's brain. You've told them a thousand times they've gotten pizza parties, they've gotten bonuses, they've gotten all that for safe. It continues to be more and more just second nature to them. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's a mindset. Yep. And uh, if we can promote that mindset right from day one that, hey, this is a safe company, this is what we do, this is how we act out there, um, then you know we're going to be rewarded for it in the end by not having accidents. And yeah. Again, our, our, we have busy seasons in our, in our world, uh, and that busy season is, is what I call dangerous season, because when we start getting into the mindset, and we, we've all done it, I mean, I remember when I ran my company, we would set up, you know, residential homes at 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 3 o'clock, right? Yeah. And so it's a push to go, go, go. And uh, when we start feeling that crunch, uh, that's generally when, when accidents take place because we're, we're being rushed. We're not thinking, we're trying to get it done. Uh, we're under that grind of that busy season. And, um, that's statistically, I mean, we look at our industry, I can see, I can see when busy season starts cause that's when accidents start. Yeah. It's, it's sad, but true. And, uh, before I let you go, I do want to do something a little bit more interesting for everybody. Uh, 
let us know, obviously no names or anything, but tell us some of the violations that you have seen where people have gotten ticketed for. Uh, they can be absolutely crazy or they can be very minimal just so that people know what is getting ticketed out there. Okay. So um, one was, uh, I'll tell the state, Wisconsin. Uh, this is a, a window cleaning company and they were cited $5,000 for uh, two people up on a roof, uh, no fall protection. Mm. So that's one. Um, another one out in Massachusetts uh, was fined fifteen thousand dollars, I believe it was. It was either eleven or fifteen thousand um, dollars. Again, walking a working surface where you could fall greater than uh, four feet, not having a documented training program, and there was another sort of training uh, violation there as well. So three separate fines, one violation. Uh, yeah, I think it was. I think it was fifteen thousand. Um, Texas uh, guy falls off of a ladder. It was, it was actually supposed to be. Um, secured, supposed to be secured at the top. The JHA actually said that it was. Um, so this is a, 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 a good story, actually. There was an investigation, and um, actually the employer was found not liable for um, anything that happened that day. Now, that guy was hurt and he was hospitalized, but um, that company proved that they did, they had the due diligence, they had done the things they were supposed to do, and that the employee made a bad decision that day, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, uh, definitely fall protection. You guys that are out there on residential roofs, um, you, you soft washers, your roof washers, window cleaners getting up doing skylights. That's a big, big offense. And, um, we see it, uh, uh quite a bit. Well, you got one skylight on a roof, you quick jump off the ladder, go ahead and come back. And nobody thinks that they have to have, you know, everybody doesn't, they don't purposely think they're above the law, but they think it's just not going to happen to them. And, like you've proven, it, it does. It does, unfortunately. And, and it's about safety. Having that person go yeah. up there and, and walk that roof, if something does happen, it's on your shoulders because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. You didn't get them trained and they didn't have the proper processes in place. I mean, that's, that's the sad truth of the whole matter. So, Yeah, and that mentality, Josh, that you just mentioned, it's, it's not going to happen to me. I always love this one because if I took the last 12 fatalities in our industry – and I was able to go back and ask them, did you think it was going to happen to you today? Yeah. Every one of them would have said no. Right. Mm -hmm. So nobody goes into it. Nobody goes into it thinking, you know what? I think I'll take a hundred thousand volt electrocution into the water fed pole today. I'll just see how that goes. Yeah. Nobody does that. And so the mentality of, I just don't think it'll happen to me. Uh, the risk is small. Uh, you know, nothing's going to happen. Very, very dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. It really is. And if you want to see, talk, meet Mike, he's going to be at the huge convention. I know it's coming up quick here, but uh, it is August 8th and 9th here, 2019. Um, he's there. You could talk to him. But if somebody wants to contact you, if they want to sign up for a class, which I'm telling you guys, absolutely invest in that safety. But if they want to do that, how do they get a hold of you? Um, Mike at expertsafetyservices.com is a good email. Uh, you can go on our website if you do want to consult with me or anything like this. Uh, I have a calendar on there as well. All my 15-minute cons consultations are free. Just go in there and schedule yourself a time with me if you're, if you're a busy guy like I am. Yeah. Um, but the email works. Um, my cell phone as well is 309-530-1215. You can text me. You can call me. I'm happy to help. Uh, really want to try to get uh, guys into a compliant nature with their businesses. and. Um, so I'm happy to get you on the right path. Even if you don't, uh, you don't, you know, want to purchase anything from us, uh, I'm still happy to consult with you and get you going on the right track. So yeah, please come see us at the huge convention. We're sold out on that safety class, Josh. Sold out. Nice. Can't take any more people. Um, that shut me down. They changed the rooms once for me. <laughs> and, uh, and then it's that just like, it's done. We're done. So, yeah. uh, I think we've got 80 people in that class. Um, it's one of the bigger ones that we've ever taught, especially in a public uh, forum like that. Uh, we're awesome. going to have a booth there at the huge convention, big booth down uh, on the one side. So come see us, stop by. We got a lot of uh, uh, little giveaways and stickers and all kinds of little safety stuff that we're going to have there. So uh, come down, check it out. If you got any questions, I'll be there. Nice. Well, go out there, get compliant, be safe. Uh, put your company in the professional status. Um, I know we don't like talking about this one and I appreciate all of you who are listening and uh, followed through this whole one. 
it's a, it's a four letter word, but if you understand everything about it, it makes it so much more simpler. It's not scary. You know, if you turn the lights on, you can see what's there. You're just not wondering. And the wondering is what scares people. So they're not there to be intimidating. I've talked with uh, OSHA guys uh, on a personal level. They're just there to make sure that people are safe. And they always say if they could save one person from doing something that ends up killing them, that's amazing to them. And you don't get the opportunity to do that. And now it's in your hands. If you have employees, it's in your hands to be the one who creates that, one who keeps somebody safe and, like Mike said, allows them to go back home to their family at night. So thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, one more time, uh, my direct number is 862 312 2026. Please do call me if I can get you anything equipment related. Uh, I'd love to be your rep. You can text me. I text all day. If you have bids or questions on anything, please do shoot me an email, jersey at windowcleaner.com. Uh, send me uh, pictures, whatever. I'm more than happy to help. And uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you're on YouTube. Go ahead and review it if you're on any of the other uh, podcast platforms. But thank you very much. If you do put an order in with me within the next week, the discount code this week is safety. If you say that, you're going to get 5% off your order if you order it through me. So that is the code. So uh, thanks again for hanging out with us. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. We're going to see each other in just a couple days. So that's always awesome. Um, but yeah, thanks for everything you do. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. All right, guys, go out there and be epic.